Oh, hello. <laughs> As you can see, I'm reading my uh, amazing Spider-Man comic book because I'm a Spider-Man fan. I swear I love him. Austin, what's wrong with you? Uh, nothing. I, I just want him to know that I'm a Spider-Man. You don't have to put a Spider-Man comic in your intro. They should know you love Spider-Man. You're so ugly. What is up, Flick fans, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I am going to do something a little bit different and a little bit special. First of all, it's special because I have never ranked the Spider-Man movies before on my channel, and I'm talking all of the Spider-Man movies. We're talking Sony. We're talking MCU. We are talking anything that has to do with the live-action Spider-Man movies, and I'm kind of making this a Spider-Verse ranking because I'm throwing in Venom in this ranking. Now, Austin, why are you doing that? You know this movie has nothing to do with Spider-Man. They've made that very clear. Yes, I know that this film apparently has no connections to Spider-Man or the larger Marvel Cinematic Universe, but in the comics, Venom kind of spawned from the character of Spider-Man. So in this ranking today on my channel, it has nothing to do with the movie universe or whatever. I'm throwing Venom in because I'm curious myself, where was Venom going to rank within the Spider-Man films, right? Because where else would you put Venom in a rankings video? I'm also doing a Venom-heavy spoiler review a little bit later on this weekend. So what I want you guys to do is comment down below some questions that you have for me. How did you feel about this specific thing? Now, warning, the comments will be a little bit spoiler heavy, but if you have major spoilers, please be sure to mark them and let me know if you guys have any cool questions for me to answer in that video. And I have a podcast this weekend going into even more detail at Pop X Cast. You can check the link in the description. But right now, Austin, you've talked my ear off. Let's get into this ranking of the now seven Spider-Man slash Venom films. <laughs> Number seven is going to uh, throw off a lot of people that I've talked to in person about this subject because for a long time, Spider-Man 3 was my least favorite Spider-Man movie, but now I think a movie has kind of surpassed that. It's one that I saw a little bit recently, and I'm talking recent as in two and a half years ago, and that's Amazing Spider-Man 2. You thought it was going to be Venom. No, this is Andrew Garfield's final film as Spider-Man, and I really like Andrew Garfield. I really like Emma Stone. I love the characters in these movies. I love the relationships and the dynamic that those two had specifically, but for some odd, strange reason, Amazing Spider-Man 2 went in such a different and convoluted and, oh, we're going to set up this giant universe with all of these villains and throw in the Green Goblin at the last second and do the whole thing where Gwen Stacy dies and spoiler alert if you haven't seen it. But nobody cares and some of those elements were really good. Like I said, I think their relationship is better than the Mary Jane Peter Parker one in the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man films. Unfortunately, that relationship in the movie that surrounded them did not work. Like I said, they threw a lot of things in. They threw in and shoehorned the death of all deaths in the comic book. That should have affected me more than anything and it was well done from a directing standpoint. I like the way that they went about it, but within the wider film, it didn't fit. It just felt really thrown in, and yes, it seemed like they were setting up for that the entire movie, but they also threw in all of these things that we just didn't care about as an audience. And they also spoiled, like, the entire movie with the trailers and even included the final shot of the film in the trailers. I hate when movies do that, and I can't really judge the entire film based off of the trailer, but I can tell you that the movie was very disappointing. They wasted a good character like Electro. They really wasted a good character like Rhino and uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2 was just a big bummer for me because I liked Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. <laughs> Next up is Spider-Man 3, and I will say this, I've actually come to like this movie a tad, just a tad bit more over the years, because when I first saw it, not when I first first saw it in theaters, but when I first saw it with the eyes of a movie critic, when I got a little bit older and I went back and revisited it, I absolutely hated it most things about it, but the more I think about certain elements of the story, like the Sandman element, I thought that story was done really well. And even certain things that Sam Raimi does as a director, he's still a good director, guys. Even though there were some very weird decisions made in this movie, I love his directing, but Spider-Man 3 as a whole did not work because it did kind of the same thing that Amazing Spider-Man 2 did, just on a weirder, more zany and kooky level. The whole Spider-Man walking around town dancing things, you guys have seen it a thousand times 
times. My brother is obsessed with the video of Peter Parker dancing and all that stuff. Yeah, it's really weird, and it does not fit in that movie. It doesn't fit in that universe. It looks like a Sam Raimi thing, something that Sam Raimi would do, but is it Spider-Man? Is it Peter Parker? And why do all the women in New York suddenly find him attractive when he's uh, walking around swinging his hair like that? It doesn't really make sense to me. And another Spider-Man movie that wasted good characters. They wasted James Franco's character entirely because somehow he loses his brains, loses his mind, and forgets who Peter Parker is. And Venom was just, uh, wow, they really need to redo that character. <laughs> Yeah, they did redo it and I just watched it a couple of days ago and that is Venom starring Tom Hardy and this movie it's not a good movie. I will say that right here, right now. It's not a good film. Yes, I got some entertainment out of it. I was enjoying myself at certain moments in the movie. That's a big kudos to Tom Hardy. I mean, the guy was kind of born to play this role, even though he wasn't placed in the best film I've ever seen. It's not a horrible movie, like a lot of critics are saying. I'm not going to repeat myself from my review. I'm just going to tell you that Venom had so much potential. It had the potential to be amazing. And when you have that much potential, but you don't capitalize on it, and you just bring us something that's kind of generic and kind of average. Yes, I think it's better than these other two Spider-Man films, but I don't think those other two Spider-Man films were very good. I don't think this movie's very good. I just think Venom is a little bit better, and Tom Hardy as Venom, and that relationship saves the entire thing. I think it might be worth a watch because it's a little bit entertaining. Maybe you aren't supposed to laugh at parts of the movie that you laughed at, but you do it anyway. Guys, overall, Venom, I'll talk about it more in my spoiler video, and I'll get into all the cameos and Easter eggs, but right here, right now, I'm just going to tell you it's uh, not a good movie. <laughs> Now we get into the first film on this list that I think is a good movie, even though I've kind of went a little bit farther down on it over the years, and that is The Amazing Spider-Man. Now when I first watched this film, I liked it better than two of the Raimi films. Now I only like it better than one because it doesn't really age as well as some of the other movies do. It was different. They took the origin story. Now they redid the origin story, and I don't know if we needed all of that stuff redone, but they did change it up and upgrade Peter Parker to more of a modern time, like they have with Tom Holland, and I really like the casting of Andrew Garfield. Now, sure, he's a, uh, what, he looks like he's 30 years old going in high school. I, I don't like when movies do that. This movie did it just like the Sam Raimi Spider-Mans did it, but you know what? They did it. I had to accept it, and I really liked his Spider-Man. Now, I think one of the reasons why I liked his Spider-Man so much is because he was more of a modern nerd, right? He wasn't this really geeky guy in high school. He was just kind of like a skater boy, and that made him more of an outcast than a nerd, and I liked what they did with that character. You could tell how smart he was. I loved the creation of the webs as opposed to the webs coming out of his hands. They switched it up just enough to make me happy. I think they may have wasted the lizard, but that character was a little bit better than other villains in this series. And once again, you see the beginning of that spark, the beginning of the Kim chemistry between him and Gwen Stacy. Now, the reason I've went further down on this movie over the years is all of the things that I said, and I just don't really find myself wanting to go back and rewatch it. Maybe it's because the original Spider-Man holds a closer place in my heart because I grew up with it, and Spider-Man Homecoming is just clearly a better movie, in my opinion, and Tom Holland is just a better Spider-Man, but it's not a movie I find myself wanting to go back and rewatch, and that's a little bit of a bummer, and it's one of the reasons why it's number four on my list. <laughs> And now, Sam Raimi directed the original Spider-Man movie back in, I believe, 2002, and this thing just swung in <laughs> and captivated everything. I remember watching this film when I was seven years old. That's right. I'm a millennial, but I was uh, I was just swept away in how incredible it was. It was such a different superhero movie from what we have seen before. Now, you go back and watch it today, right? Some things, and this happens with a lot of films, but some things are a little bit dated, right? They're a little bit more cheesy than what you would see in today's superhero films, but for the time, it worked so well. It broke so many box office records because people were going in and there was good word of mouth because it was a good film. It was well acted. It was well cast. I think Defoe as Green Goblin, as silly as his costume was, he worked so well. And then J. Jonah Jameson, I still hold on to the fact that he's one of the best casting decisions anyone has ever made for a superhero film because he just embodied that character so well. The moments between him and Mary Jane, they were really well done, and I just really like Tobey Maguire as Spider-Man. He gets a little weird sometimes. He did some things in the third one that I don't think were Peter Parker, but overall, he had the heart. He put his soul in it, and you could tell, and he's a very memeable character. <laughs> so I guess that makes him good. But yeah, Spider-Man directed by Sam Raimi. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
right, number two, is it Spider-Man 2? Is it Spider-Man Homecoming? Well, like I said, Tom Holland is my favorite Spider-Man, but I just can't get that movie to the number one spot. Now, it is very close. Out of all of the movies, their pairings together in the rankings, number one and number two, they are right there, man. But I have to put Homecoming at number two because Spider-Man 2 just... It holds the place that's right here in my heart, you know, and that doesn't change the fact that I think Homecoming is a great, great, great superhero movie. One that I continue, I go back, I rewatch it, I find myself wanting to rewatch it, first of all, but then I rewatch it and I'm like, wow, this is, uh, this is easily one of the best Marvel films, and I don't know why I have it ranked so low on that list. I'm going to have to do a little bit of shuffling and rearranging, but Spider-Man Homecoming just does everything that it needs to do. It was so different from the other Spider-Man movies, Spider-Man, Spider-Man movies that we have seen before, and it did exactly what it told us it was going to do. They said they were going to give us a John Hughes feel straight out of high school, a little bit of comedy, a little bit of zaniness, some wackiness, some things that would ensue in an actual high school. That's why it felt surreal, because everything that happened was real. Realistic. It's like, yeah, I can see myself at that high school, and hey, look, they look like actual high schoolers as opposed to 30-year-old men. But you throw in Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man playing an integral part, one of the best villains we have seen in the MCU, Michael Keaton as the Vulture. The guy was so good. He was this blue-collar guy. You saw why he was doing what he was doing. He made for a good villain. Now, the thing about this movie that I didn't love was the action scenes. There's not really an action scene that is memorable, and that's why I think they have to do something something a little bit different in Far From Home. Give us a really good action scene. Spider-Man versus Mysterio, Jake John Hall, man. Yes. But I don't think Homecoming needs to be this movie. It's like, oh yeah, I remember that scene and this scene. It's just a really good film. It's a movie that is rewatchable and funny. And Tom Holland is Spider-Man. I mean, what, what can I say that hasn't been said? Nothing. I can say nothing that hasn't been said. And so clearly Spider-Man 2 is the number one Spider-Man movie on my list. It's mostly because this film is just so epic. Everything about it is just like, oh my gosh, how did you go about accomplishing making a movie that has these kind of like, okay, that's kind of funny moments, but it still holds that heart and that emotion and one of the best villains we have ever seen in Alfred Molina as Doc Ock. This guy killed it. He hasn't really been in a lot of other films, but I just said his name off the top of my head and Doc Ock is really the only thing that I know him for. That's how memorable this villain was. He was so good. You care about him. You know why he's doing what he's doing and then he gets corrupted. It's sad. It's emotional. Yes, the CGI does not really hold up as much and like Spider-Man 1, you can go back and see some of the things that are a little bit dated. And it's kind of funny that he took his mask off and all those people were like, nah, we won't tell anybody. I'd be like, that guy's spider, the guy that looks, draw a sketch out of him, and this is Peter Parker. Of course, today everybody has cell phones, so I just snap a picture. And one thing I love about the Raimi movies is they do web swinging. Web swinging so well. Now, Amazing Spider-Man does that well, too. That's one thing that Homecoming never really captured for me was the web swinging, but I don't really think we've gotten into that yet. But for me, it's, it's still the Raimi films. That one shot of Spider-Man swinging in the dark city, and that truck is just driving, and he swings through it, and the camera follows him, and I I just, I'm sitting there like that, mm -hmm. All of the stuff between him and MJ and then Harry Osborn where he comes in and Doc Ock's story, it's just, it's all so good. And just the shot at the end where she is watching him swing away and you can see that look on her face tell exactly what she's thinking. She said everything that she needed to say even though she said nothing at all. And those are the reasons why I think Spider-Man 2 is still my favorite Spider-Man movie. Now that may change the more I watch Homecoming, but like I said guys, you can't go wrong with either of them. You can't really go wrong with the character of Spider-Man. Let me know in the comments down below which movie is your favorite, what is your ranking, which one is your least favorite, and where are you going to throw Venom in these, right? If you had to put it on a Spider-Man list, and I know everybody, once again, is not going to be on board for that. Austin, what are you doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm tired. But just let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to go to moviebabblereviews.com. They're doing all kinds of very sweet, very cool things on that website consistently. Check out my podcast, my Litterbox page. I have a very special announcement on my Venom spoiler review video, so be sure to come back for that and check out what we have in store for this channel because it's a lot of fun things. This is my third video I filmed today. I'm going to go sleep for a while. You guys are the absolute best. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later. Oh,